फ्रेंड्स हाय आई एम विद नवीन तिवारी फाउंडर ऑफ इंडिया फर्स्ट यूनिकॉर्न एंड ही इज कंसेंटेड टू शेयर अ फैसिनेटिंग जर्नी ऑफ ऑन्टरप्रनोरशिप एंड लेसन फ्रॉम हिज जर्नी थैंक सो मच फॉर होस्टिंग अस इन द ऑफिस नवीन इट्स ऑलवेज अ प्लेजर टू बी हियर इट्स जस्ट गॉट फैंटेस्टिक एनर्जी एंड फॉर द लास्ट हाउ एवर मेनी ईयर्स हैव बीन कमिंग हियर and uh, absolutely welcome vikram and thank you for inviting me to the show and i love your socks by the way and they are so bright that i'm just absolutely enjoying having this conversation with you it, while getting distracted by your socks it's it's in keeping with your office <laughs> ah there you are <laughs> I, i'm going to give uh, my introduction to navin i mean he really needs no intro um he was, uh, maybe most people don't know he was born and brought up in kanpur on the iit kanpur uh, Uh, in the IIT Kanpur uh, uh, campus, born to uh, academics, met his wife when he was ten years old in uh, fifth standard. Both uh, she didn't become my wife when she was ten. Well, that's true. <laughs> uh, over a, a very long courtship, uh, uh, lasting from Kanpur uh, all the way uh, across different cities. Grit and perseverance was always there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, his early journey spans IIT Kanpur, McKinsey, uh, HBS, Charles River Ventures. I would like to say his journey really started when he founded Inmobi as M Coach. Uh, personal story about Naveen and me. Uh, I blame uh, as well as equal parts blame and credit Naveen for uh, getting me into the VC space. Uh, I was at McKinsey doing a project on digital India, and Naveen was the expert uh, on call. and at the end of that call i realized i know nothing about tech and that's not acceptable to me uh, because i started life as an engineer and decided to take the plunge uh, i must tell you in all my arrogance at that time i thought i'll do whatever navin did which is uh, went to mckinsey then uh, went to charles river ventures which is which is a vc and figure out what space is uh, is hot and what space is is happening and then i'll start out in that space but i became a vc and i realized how hard a founder's <laughs> life is uh, also realized that uh, i would not make a great founder but from found my uh, calling in uh, early stage venture capital so for that i thank you um, i love your humility by the way uh, but all of this has led to a lasting friendship uh, i truly treasure that uh, so thanks for the time we'll keep this conversation free wheeling uh, and you know given that we are at your office i thought we'll start with early days at inmobi uh people know the transition from m coach to inmobi but what do you really remember from those early days you know i think the <clears throat> first of all thank you for the introduction it was just uh, um it was good to remember some of these old days and uh, i don't know whether you you want to thank me for the for the shift to this wild crazy world of startups or or not but uh, i think the many founders out there really love having you on their side so i would congratulate you on on how you are perceived within the founding community so great work on and being a you know not you an entrepreneur friendly yet return uh, giving venture capitalist i hope the return giving is already happening uh, i shall also know at some point of time uh, but i think on the early days of uh, of in mobi or m co as we started off back in 2007 2008 almost 11 years uh, ago i think the you know the i think you're asking about the stake i think the it's it's very lonely in the you know it's very lonely in the beginning um, and nothing seems to make sense and and you know you always want to give up and i think that you know when you want to give up and your quest to you know continue has very limited reasons and you know rational mind doesn't allow you to continue and i think uh you know i personally wanted to give up many times uh, probably you know once or twice a day at times you know it reached those stages where you just wanted to just you know kind of give up and i think we we didn't um and i think that to me was one of the most memorable pieces of of that time and i think from a uh you know things that i thought we I always tell people who do things today uh, to to have done differently at that point of time would I don't think when we started M coach the idea of M coach was big the idea of M coach was uh, relatively very limited I would say you know in today's world if you are trying to become a you know trying to start a tech company 
anyway it's going to be a hell of a ride anyway it's going to be very tough anyway it's not going to be easy you will not have a life so why not actually go for something which is going to be big right so instead of uh, trying to do something which is which is small so i would you know say at least that to be a thing that i would go back probably correct uh, so i know you advise a bunch of founders you've invested in a in a bunch of companies How, what do you do uh, and i know that you've played a role in shaping some of their ideas or at least their go to market to make sure that they go after the big ideas how do you do some of that today look i think the i think you know people are generally very smart they, they, you know all the co-founders you know them a lot better than in i probably do are they, uh, some very very smart people and uh, you know everyone is not no one struggles with you know capability no one struggles with you know you know hard work or uh, you know uh, you know able to tell a story most of them can actually do this. nobody you know struggles with these basic things they they are they are essentially uh captive of their own thinking in some shape and form and you know obviously having done this for 10 plus years that you know there is one thing i probably know is you know that they are captive of their own thinking that's the and so the only thing i probably try to do is to uh help them see slightly bigger picture of their own idea uh, i can't probably draw that out for them because they should do it and they they will do a better job than me uh but uh, you know as much as possible if they could see uh, a bigger picture of their own business they might change the direction so my view in life has been that if you if you put a goal post which is slightly out, far out there um, it's not that you need to be rigid about it completely but you at least chart out paths to get there uh, you know in differently if the goal post were at a different level um and if it's too close by you, you you know you take a different path but that's not going to get you to a bigger play so i think that's the less largely what you know i try to do and i enjoy it because you know when some of those guys you know later on come back and say hey i i i did this you know you feel feel satisfied because those are businesses that you can never be in so uh, but i also don't make money like you would by investing in them but at least i i enjoy yeah, I, i think uh, that's doing a that. topic for another day on <laughs> who's more successful as an investor <laughs> but i love the phrase on cap- captive of their own thinking in our balan uh, we call it outside in uh, which is just go seek ideas from outside about your idea and about pretty much every aspect yeah. of your business and that's a great way to actually make your own idea much bigger yeah, yeah. Uh, i'm going to switch gears to inmobi and the uh, and the fantastic organization that you built one aspect of the organization which is this big international org you gone after so many markets some markets you open some markets you expanded some markets you i know you uh, you stepped back from what's the learning on building this international org and the secret sauce to it look in the beginning when we decided to go uh, for an international market it was it was more as a forcing function for us because in in the you know around 2010 or so the the digital markets in countries like india or even in asia was relatively smaller so we were frankly forced to figure this problem out which seemed like a daunting one to begin with because you know everybody rightly would say it's a very hard problem to solve you know people struggle to solve things for india but i think the uh, the thing that you find when you you know kind of jump into a hard problem that it's actually not that hard when you are into it so part one at least to me was it's not as hard as we think it is by the way you know if you put your mind to you know a few countries and a few markets you can actually go and solve for it and you'll have to find the you'll have to figure out whether you have to make changes to the go to market phenomena f- you know by by market do you have to have a different org strategy by market do you ha- need to also have a different tech strategy by market and you know as you go deeper it becomes harder and harder and harder by the way so if you need to have a different tech strategy for a different market then it's a very hard problem to solve the second we never sent uh anybody from india to set up those those markets we always hired a local person and we had that person you know lead the market in and so in scenarios where that worked it worked brilliantly and in scenarios where we got a wrong person it failed miserably and you know it had nothing to do with the market or the size of the market or anything you know it was just literally boiled down to the leader in the market and if the market worked great we exactly knew why it worked if it failed we exactly knew why it failed in hindsight by the way i would all, i would make a statement to say 
maybe you know we could have done a better job of you know kind of you know sending few people from our home base to act as a strong connect back to the mothership and uh, we didn't do that then because we probably didn't even have enough people to who could do these kind of you know roles and maybe we just didn't even get it uh, but you know that certainly worked out well so the prevailing wisdom is you know get somebody from the founding team to move and you know i know now abhay has uh, uh, been convinced or volunteered yep. uh, to move to the us how big has that been no no and i think by the way you know that's the other learning that i had was or we actually all had as a founding team member is you know there are there are places in which we can have an effect you know have an impact there are places we can not have an impact right so for example in china even if we move i don't know what impact we can really really have right it's just you know we have limitations of our own in terms of what we could potentially have done and it was also a very risky market for us to say hey if we even go there we don't even know whether you know at the end of 3 years we'll have anything or not but markets like us i completely agree with you for the past 5 to 6 years now we have had one co-founder or the other actually based out of uh, out of the us amit was there before uh, abhay was there and then abhay went in there so when abhay so when amit first moved to us our business was about 15% uh, of our total business was 15% today it's about 55% comes from the us so you know we obviously were able to scale us business in general uh, to a to a quite an extent shifting gears and talking about the culture at inmobi i've always been amazed at the uh, quality of talent that you've been able to attract here um, what do you think has been uh, integral to you being able to attract that uh, kind of talent whether it's from the iit then i am from mckinsey it's a one signal of pedigree but you've always been able to attract these guys uh, and you know second part of that question is that you in movies also spawned lots of entrepreneurs you created this entrepreneurial uh, atmosphere internally i know you have a, a area for entrepreneurs in in movie and you're very comfortable le- letting go you invest in all of them uh, how have you created all of this you know there was uh, and this kind of goes back to a uh, you know a story that i let me just lay out that story before i answer this question because it's not something that you know was that came in uh, i would argue our, our culture wasn't something like this on day 0 you know it uh, you know there was a point of time that we said hey we just have to be a different company to a certain extent uh, you know in about 2012 2013 when you know we were rapidly growing and we saw you know we had massive funding and we just were hiring people and you know all the right things that we thought logically we were we were going to do we realized that we didn't grow um, as we were investing in fact we we thought we would grow you know 3x or something in a specific year i think 2013 or something uh, and we only grew like 40% which is not bad but it was not 3x and and we lost like we lost probably a we had probably an attrition of like 30 35% and you know our our company became like a revolving door wow i didn't know that and and it caused a lot of pain in me personally because i was like hey we i think we have everything right you know look at the headlines look at the revenue growth look at the potential everything was was right but nobody was staying uh, and it hit me at that point of time is that the headlines the external headlines are a great way to get people in but the core strength of the organization is the one that keeps people there um and so it was the first time in my life where i was able to you know segregate between these two things and so whenever i personally now look at any organization i look at are good people staying there or are good people leaving uh, i don't for example worry about what the media is necessarily saying because i know people internally will know what the company is all about now the, now this is a great state to be in but how do you get to this specific state so our view on this was let's build this place as a place it was a very simple you know thing for me by the way let's build, build this place as a place where i would want to be that was it let's do anything and everything that i would want to do and i'm not a eccentric person of you know extreme nature or anything of that sort that you know i said look if i if we can debate some of this but yeah <laughs> you know it was simple enough to say if if i what kind of environment do i like to work on all right i like to work in an environment where i'm given freedom 
okay? What kind of uh, interactions do you like to have? I like to have respectable interactions. Uh, what kind of a, you know, system do you like? Well, I like a system that where, you know, I'm trusted. What kind of a growth do you like? Well, I like growth growing in, you know, professionally and personally, and I want to learn more things. What kind of, you know, people do you want to, you know, surround yourself with? Well, people that I would want to be surrounded with, irrespective of whether they worked in movie or not. I just want great people around me. So we then kind of use these very simple, you know, overtly simple, frankly, would ask me things and then said, okay, okay, let's just build policies around this. So every policy of ours was basically built around this. For example, I'll give you one more. Do I really like to be asked uh, and, you know, given marks at the end of a quarter or a year to say, hey, you did, you know, if I would ask somebody, hey, how did I do? Well, it seems that you got 3.7 out of 5. You know, we're not in school anymore. Right? We can't do these kind of things. Uh, so we changed everything and we basically converted, try to convert in Mobi into a place where people can come in and, uh, and have the freedom. Uh, you have freedom to essentially go and work in any other team that you want. Because why? Well, you know, each one of us, you know, think of yourself, right? What, what do you enjoy about your job? The fact that you can work with many people in different environments. And, from, and it took us a year. And from that day onwards, we have not touched it. We don't spend anything trying to build a culture or do anything because this is it. This is who we are. And we don't try to fake it. We don't try to like create programs around, hey, let's, let's, you know, hey, what's my culture budget and what should, because we don't need it anymore. It's just, it is who we are and this is how we're going to stay. And, you know, what that has done, by the way, is when we are in tough times, which I think every company gets to, we'll tell them, hey, we are in tough times. Please help. And they will... You know, they'll all, you know, it's funny when, whenever once or twice we've been in tough times, you know, it's like a family that comes together right now. Now, I know for a fact that if you build that out there, I can have different strategies. Uh, you know, today, you know, we have three companies that we talk about uh, or maybe the something else or the strategy for the marketing, advertising business of our changes. All of that is fine. But if this is there, I know I can build something for a long period of time. So that's why it's, it's important to me and, uh, and, and we didn't even do too much to get there, by the way. We just did some simple things. Firstly, it just shows you know, how much thought uh, you put into this and how close it is uh, to your heart. Uh, and the one thing I will take away is you know, build a place where you would work. Uh, and I think that's a great way of thinking about, uh, about culture for, for founders. Uh, talking about uh, tough times, uh, I know Unmobi has its, had its fair share of uh, ups and downs. Uh, and at times public with a lot of noise ar around it. Um, and sometimes, you know, you get support from your internal guys. Sometimes you don't get support. Sometimes you don't get support from external people uh, that you thought you would. How do you drown out all the no noise? And I know grit and perseverance is big on your, uh, on your list. But, in, you know, take us through some of those moments. What keeps you grounded and centered? And what's helped you through the, some of those downs? Yeah, look, I think... Uh... You know, tough periods are, are very common and I think uh, uh, some, uh, some companies in today's startup world, uh, you know, get accolades, far higher accolades than what they deserve, like in us, you know, in, as part of that. Uh, or we get beaten down far more than we should for the, you know, for the mistakes that we would have done, right? So it kind of, it swings both ways, extremes, and you learn to accept that to begin with. Uh, yes, and you know, we, we were three, four years ago, we were publicly, uh, you know, media ripped us apart to say, hey, you know, the company's dead. Uh, and, you know, it was one of those things where, which you didn't know to begin with, you know, how to handle it. And uh, because you look, looked internally, you were going through a little bit of tough phase, but you didn't realize that, you know, you, what you were being told by the external and therefore the pressure on you was so much outside in as against inside out uh, to say, hey, I don't know how to really handle this. There was a sense of being dismissive about it. There was a sense of saying, look, you know, everybody is against you. And you, you have all of these emotions that yeah. kind of rile you up uh, to begin with. I think what, what gives you comfort is to kind of, you know, kind of look inside the company uh, and talk to people internally and, and really talk to them and say, hey, Look, I know we're getting beaten outside. What do you think? And 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 you 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 see some of their responses, um, and the people internally will be genuine with you, right? And so, 
when that happened for us with the uh, with us for the first time you know I, i kind of gathered the courage to go and talk to my own team to say hey look i, I you know i know we are getting beaten from outside do you think do you really think it's all true or am i just blinded because i'm like this optimistic co- you know founder and i i don't see i'm i'm not am i not seeing something and the response internally probably gave me the the, the biggest strength which was to say hey yes navin we have two issues and we have you know 25 things which are going great for us we have to solve for these two issues here are the ways that we can solve for it. and everybody you know had their different versions of this and my job was to a first i kind of gathered a lot of you know confidence back into the company personally and which i could then reciprocate back but also you could come back and say this is how we're going to do this i think what happened for us was we uh, we basically put our heads down and we said you know we are not going to try and and call out you know anything which is going to be hey we are going to win the world cup we're going to say we're going to go one match by one match and and we called it out the beginning we said month by month then we said quarter by quarter then we said you know half yearly by half yearly and we said yearly by yearly and we just executed 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 and uh, you know we and we solved you know one problem by the next problem and you know within the first six months we were out of the woods uh, but that gave us you know you know if you are in if you go and do this extreme exercises right uh, of you know whatever bodybuilding you know extreme sports you become very strong and i thought as an organization we went through that phase of you know 6 to 9 months where we became very internally our core strength was really really strong and and a lot of the things that we we did then we do very systematically right we do it very properly we don't you know we don't splurge money we don't um, you know we don't do uh, you know random things we just you know just, just just do them and we don't also talk about it anymore because we realize that you know talking about it too much is also not probably needed because it gets <laughs> you get hit both ways with it so we we just become more uh, you know we don't talk too much to media about those things anymore but i think more importantly i think some of the things that that were put up at that point of time ha- are now coming out whether it's the company that we announced about a couple of months ago which is true factor or you know uh, glance that we just you know came became far more public with and you know be, each of those companies are very large by the way but we never talked about them for the longest period of time we kept them under the wraps and we kept executing so and all of that i give a lot of credit to what happened 3 4 years ago because it just it just do things you know much better now uh, i think that's a uh, honestly it's a uh, it's a beautiful story uh, and uh, it gives you a glimpse into how much founders have to go through uh, to actually build uh, institutions uh, you and i have talked about this often that you know the the pendulum swings a lot uh both positive and negative in the in our ecosystem uh and even for investors it swings a lot and we spoken about the fact that your at least as an investor my conviction is tested multiple times over the course of an investment and you know i've asked you for advice on some of this what is your advice to investors when the pen- pendulum is swinging the other way uh and as an investor you know you know my role is to uh for, for some companies in that period i have to double down on some company that have to evaluate carefully and maybe they won't make it so i'm playing that portfolio but what's your advice uh for investors working with founders through that period look i think there are two and this is my view on this and i'm not an you know uh i i may have a slightly different view in the way i i, I look at this look i think i i would possibly look for saying are you backing a business model and and i know there is a stage of the company but irrespective frankly are you ba- backing a, a a business model or are you backing a the the co-founder or the team and i think that decision has to be made and i think uh if you are deeply into a company uh then you would know who you are backing by the way and in most of the examples i would argue that you would go back go and back not the business model but the yeah. but the co-founder because the business models can change evolve you know tweak and you know you can come back in uh and and i think that is only done when you have a long term relationship with the with the company with the co-founder because the and the, and and you're tested and you as an investor is possibly only tested in tough times uh 
And that's when the entrepreneurial community essentially looks up to you and say, right, this is the guy that, you know, we want on our side. Uh, because anybody can back a great business model and keep backing it while it's, it's great. The business model, every business model in today's technology business has three years shelf life. So, and no return in any fund is ever going to come in three years. So you possibly are going to see two changes in the business models for sure, for a scale company, by the way, irrespective of how you look at it. So the point I was trying to get to is you end up, A, backing the co-founder and B, or the team, and B, be ready for that phase where the, the business model is going to come in and change. And that's the swing factor that you're looking for. And I think that conviction that you're referring to in, in, in the point probably is, is only around not the company, but the, but the team. And so are you backing the team or are you not backing the team? I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, I was talking to uh, someone the other day and I was, we were having a conversation on top 10 relationships in life. And, uh, and I realized of the top 10 relationships in life, five are uh, with founders of, of my companies. And uh, all those five relationships, they've been formed during tough times. Uh, and uh, frankly, I, I treasure them and uh, they treasure those relationships because we've just gone through those tough times. And honestly, for me, that's what makes uh, at least my role fun, yeah. uh, to, be, uh, to be with those companies and those founders during those tough times. By the way, if you, if you look back and you see most people cre create great success with the same set of people repeatedly. And they, they stay together, whether it's businesses or, you know, uh, you know teaming up, you know, and they always do it together. Like there's, there is always this, you know, a, a loose cohort of people that are always together. Um, and I somewhere feel, by the way, and it's a very disconnected point to the questions that you were asking probably is, I somewhere feel India lacks that to a certain extent because I think a lot, a lot of us are far more in, in a very small individual buckets of ours versus, you know, as cohorts of people who are there, um, you know, to kind of support uh, each other a lot. So I was going to ask you this question uh, later, but I'll come to it now, which is, you know, you've come to this realization of, I want to work with friends, which by the way, sounds like a very old man thing to say, mm -hmm. uh, but how have you come to this realization and what's advice for sort of early founders on applying some of that? Yeah, it, maybe it is an old because I'm turning old probably, but I think the, uh, the uh, you know, it's, you realize, well, you realize that you want to be with people who either are your friends or become your friends, right? So, and because, and a friends is not to be confused with saying you're letting go of each other's mistakes. That's not the, that's not the point that one is trying to get to. It's not that, hey, you know, I'm going to be easy on you. That's not the point. It's to say, I can be open with you, right? And, and you realize that you need people who can, who will back you uh, in tough times. And therefore, for me, by the way, uh, loyalty is a huge aspect within the company itself. For example, I think about 35, maybe 40% of the company uh, or people in the company have spent more than five years and we are a 10 year old company. Uh, so have spent more than five years. My management team has spent an average of seven and a half years uh, with me. And to me, that's, that's loyalty. And to me, that's, it, is, it is both ways, right? I know they are there for me and I hope that I'm there for them. Um, and to me, that's friendship, right? Now, it need not be that I must hang out with them every social evening. But just the fact that you have a strong bond where just the look, you, you look into the eye of the other one, the other person knows what you are going through. And the nod from their side to say we'll solve for it is the exact thing that you need. And the reason why I say this even to the young, younger uh, you know, entrepreneurs is because you're going to face a lot of that soon. You just don't know when. But you are. And... You cannot fight that alone, even though we will all think of ourselves as these you know, amazing warriors that we will go and fight this ourselves. Why fight it yourself and you can fight with few others who will be at, on your side? So therefore, I am a big fan of you know, having people, um, having investors, having, you know, ed having people as advisors, by the way, if you need, need them to be, so that you are surrounded by people who will support you through the good and the bad. I think there is, there is a very important learning there for uh, early founders. And, you know, I often urge uh, founders to date their co-founders for an extensive period of time. And sometimes you don't have that extensive period of time. But actually hang out with them in different settings, right? Don't just do 
we one or two coffees together yeah. right go actually sit with their families at home uh, go actually go do an activity together do whatever you know if you guys drink go go have uh, go truly have a lot of drinks together yeah uh, and that usually helps because you can't fake chemistry yeah. over multiple interactions and then then you really find out uh, you know what makes that person tick and i think that's what ends up with these you know lasting co-founder investor uh, partnerships absolutely absolutely and by the way i think i also tell this to a lot of the younger uh, entrepreneurs right now the new ones who are just starting off like when we started off 10 years ago we didn't really have a pool of advisors to go to we didn't know anybody who would you know who had been stupid enough to do what we were going to try and do the 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 group now actually has bunch of people who've been stupid enough right and have tried to do these things and so you know putting getting them into the fold uh in some shape and form is far more important because you know the the best advices are not the ones that are made on like a excel sheet or a powerpoint they're basically just like a simple little nudge to say why aren't you doing this versus that and to me those are the most valuable ones that i've gotten throughout my life and they come in the most innocuous of the places it could be when you're sitting with somebody next to on an aircraft or you know just catching up on coffee and you don't even intend to be getting that advice where you get it and that changes the the direction in which you're moving those are the people that you should surround yourself with uh, such that you know you don't know when you're going to get something it's just but you have to be at least create the environment for it no uh, and you know you mentioned this aircraft thing i don't know if you remember you and i spent i think 3 hours on a flight from Bang- bangalore to delhi and delhi, it was like yeah. a de- delayed flight and we ended up at a uh, in the emergency road together and yes. i think we just uh, we didn't even realize that that flight was that long yeah uh, and one of the things that took away was how curious you were about everything that was happening and and what what we were doing uh, and i know you keep pushing yourself on this personal growth uh, you've taken on, you took on a board role at ptm you invested in multiple uh, uh, companies where you know raise pay together and i know you invested in nest away what dimension does that give you you know hanging out with some of the other startups i know it's a time commitment um, and i know you take that role seriously look i think the uh, uh, each one of these guys are phenomenal people right so whether it was uh, vijay at paytm or you know at razor pay or amar at nest and there are like 15 20 more i think there is so much to learn i actually have you know they you know it kind of it's oxymor- oxymoronic but I, you know they they kind of pay you to learn right? L- literally to say uh, i could have done i could have paid just to sat on their um, you know in to get whatever sit in the conversation that they were having because i took away so much uh, and i think it is on one hand it 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 keeps you very agile and you know knowing what's really happening in the world because otherwise you're living in your own cocoon and it's phenomenal by the way but you just in your own cocoon and and secondly every one of successful entrepreneurs out there has a quirk they're not you know they're not what do you call they're not like a very template they're not normal people they're not normal. founders are not normal they're people. not normal right <laughs> yeah. so what quirk is great that a you will not actually be able to build on it but at least capture some component of it because the reason why companies become successful is not because you do all the right things is because you do one of those things really phenomenally well and what is it that's getting some what is that one thing that's getting you know uh, someone to essentially create this what can you take away from that and and you know the the learning has just been uh, uh, you know it's just been phenomenal Uh, from that perspective and you know the and people will ping you at any point of time in life by the way that's the beauty of these conversations and these relationships that you end up building with bunch of them they and they ping you not when they're having a great quarter or anything they ping you and they're saying hey i am stuck and i need help here and um, and you know you kind of sit through there and you know you spend 2 hours probably and that may be just it so we are in a couple of companies together and you know what what i've heard from founders is that uh, navin says things that others just don't say and he's available in the middle of the night uh, and to me actually fr- frankly that's great advice for me uh, because that's what they treasure uh, so you should you should feel very good about that all right <laughs> um, don't tell my wife 
<laughs> anyway, I, working too hard. I, I think she already knows. <laughs> I, I, I don't think anything is hidden from her. Uh, I mean, I, I don't have anything else. I know, uh, uh, you know, you've been very kind with your time and, you know, I can keep going on with you. And uh, But thank you so much for the time. Truly appreciate it. Uh, last qu- quick uh, question. You know, I know you don't think beyond in movie, but if you were starting up today, what business would you start up? Ah, uh, look, I think there are, you know, there is, there are obviously uh, horizontals in which you could think about. There is obviously artificial intelligence that's just changing the world. There is things around blockchain. There is think about, uh, um, I think probably something in the, um, in the education space could be very interesting today. Um, something in the retail space could be very interesting. I think, you know, all of these industries are completely going to change in the years to come. And they are very, very, uh, what one should say, still old economy uh, in the way they are they're functioning. So I haven't really thought about this very deeply, by the way, if you do. Yeah, um, you named like four different Yeah, things. exactly. You know, it's like, I've never thought about this, but yeah. Maybe next time we catch up, I might have a better answer to you than Excellent. Than this. Thanks again for the time. Navi. And thank you. Thank you. I enjoyed talking. Thank you. Thank you for listening. And you can find the transcribed version of this podcast on matrixpartners.in. You can also follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn for more updates.